So real quick, before you did that, did Um, mm -hmm. And your your origin story, like how did you get into? Is that he? Uh, he made an age joke the last time we were. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna use that kooka. Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to another episode of Real Estate Talk with Randy Sedwell. We just tried out this intro that came in, uh, you know, so let me know what you think in the comments. So who we have for episode nine is Terry Penny. Um, honestly, I've seen her at all the meetups and I, I've looked up to her as well. I see a lot of stuff that she puts out. So I'm very, very excited and very happy to have her on this show she there, there's a honestly there's probably nothing that i if it's real estate related she's probably done it or getting into it so um with that being said if you have questions throughout this podcast please put them in the chat um i we will answer them as we go you'll get whatever you'll get my opinion on it and as well as probably most importantly you'll get her 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 response to it so um, again, put them in the chat here, whether you're on YouTube or you're on uh, our Facebook channel. All right, uh, try to go to our YouTube so we can get some, get the algorithm more uh, going in there, in that direction. And I can actually post your name in here. Otherwise, like I'm just gonna have to uh, say your name when you have questions. Um, with that being said, welcome Terry Penny. How you doing? Hey Randy, how you doing? Awesome, awesome. So. I'm very excited to have you on the show. All right, um, I know you you've seen some of the shows that we've had, uh, and I'm very happy to uh, you agree with it to be able to, enough to be able to come on and, and share your experience with this. So good to be here. I'm glad I'm, I'm I you know you've got you've had some great shows. I've watched a few of them so. <laughs> Thank you. I really do appreciate it. You're a very busy woman, so I, I understand that, <laughs> you know. Um, and today we have, we uh, reaccommodated for being on Thursday. I want to apologize, everybody, that this is normally on a Monday night at 8 p.m. We're doing it Thursday because I had some personal stuff happen. I don't want to get into exactly what it was, but either way, um, you know, everything's taken care of, everyone's safe, no problem. So, I, you know, with that being said, I thank you, Terry Penny, for having, um, uh, uh, you know, for accommodating the, the change and everything like that. And what's actually really cool is your, your name is actually my mother's name, so <laughs> Terry, oh, yeah, okay. so. Um, that, that's really she be a lovely woman. <laughs> she is. She's a very lovely woman. Very lovely woman. Yeah. So, um, anyways, tell me a little bit about your, uh, how you got started and, um, you know, how you got into real estate in general. Okay. Um, we gotta go back more than 30 years. I got my real estate license in 1992. So it's been 31 years. I started with Real Estate One. Um, I'm currently with EXP. Okay. And um, update, I just passed the broker's exam on um, Tuesday. So I am now a broker. And the reason for doing that, um, just to fast forward, thank you, is um, I'm opening a property management company. So I've been managing my own, my own properties for 30 years and I'm partnering with my contractor who's also been in construction for 30 years. So, right. but, but, but to answer your question, yeah, I got started as a realtor in 92. Mm -hmm. um, my first year, so it was so different back then because um, I was at like a 45% commission <laughs> and <laughs> MLS was literally a book that someone had, we didn't have the internet back then, right? So right, right. we'd come into the office and actually look through a book of all the listings and everything. And we would um, submit our offers standing at the fax machine. So 
Um, <clears throat> so I probably, I think I lost more money than I made my first year. Um, and then I got into um, learning about investing. And, okay. and that's when it changed really everything. Um, I wasn't a very good realtor. I'm right. not a good realtor now, 30 years later, because off market is my comfort zone. Um, I, I have access to the MLS, mm -hmm. but I, I really don't do anything with it other than checking comps, doing CMAs, doing uh, research for my own investing or um, for wholesaling. So I, I've been wholesaling for over 30 years, um, but off market's my comfort zone, even though I'm licensed. Got it. So that's another reason why I like bringing you on and why I follow you is because you're a fellow wholesaler. So, um, you know, first off, it, it, it's really cool um, on that. And how did, so when you got into real estate, you, you started as a broke, as an agent, you said, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And I was, I was 23. Mm -hmm. You were 23. Okay. And you weren't really that great of an agent. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't so, think I pre-qualified anyone before I start showing them houses. <laughs> I think that was my first mistake. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. How did, uh, so how did going from being an agent to um, wholesale or the next step that you did? So um, I, I realized once I started learning about investing, how different the realtor world was from the investor world. Okay. Um, so in, um, in, in the nineties, um, so my husband, uh, stayed up a lot later than I did. And he was watching the late night infomercials mm -hmm. that came on. And, um, I don't know if anyone's listening is old enough to remember the late night infomercials that came out at like three o'clock in the morning. And there was this guy with a mustache in Florida that was talking about fixing up houses and increasing the value and, you know, making rents and, and it all made sense. And so my husband was like, you got to watch this because you already know something about real estate. So, you know, yeah. this all makes sense to me. And so we were so, um, you know, Fast forward, I understand the seminar yeah. circuit now because yep. we end up working for the company. But back then, you know, they have the free, um, the free seminar, not yep. webinar. It was no webinars. It was <laughs> a seminar. You actually had to show up in person, yep. right? Yep. And so there was uh, the free seminar, and then they sold you on the three-day weekend, right? I mean, this mm -hmm. is the same stuff that's been going on for yeah. decades, right? I mean, it's I still going on. <laughs> courses I bought was from Carlton Sheets, if anyone remembers that name. Okay. So the no money down stuff. So I, I'm, I'm really dating myself, but um, it was so different back then. Mm -hmm. So anyways, we showed up, we did the three day, when they did the three day, and um, th that just taught you just enough to be dangerous, right? Yeah. And so then they, they upsold sold you on the, the bigger packages and, and so forth. So we spent over $30,000 for our, our education package, but it was worth every penny. And I always, okay. even the people that I, I mentor now, I tell them, you're either going to pay for your, your, your education now, or you're going to pay for it later in lawsuits or, or damages or, or loss losses because you didn't yeah. you know how to analyze the property you know yep. and you're going to lose money on and then and then of course this real estate thing doesn't work because it didn't work for you because you didn't get your education before you got into this business exactly but, but anyway so i i understand the value of education and so we had no problem spending the money um you know and we were taking boot camps which means you actually got on a plane and traveled to Georgia and Texas and Florida mm. and, and you know, where are they, they held mm. the boot camps, yeah. but it was three or four days of nothing but information about just that subject, whether it was, you know, foreclosures or, um, um, you know, the rentals or, yeah. you know, uh, lease options or anything that you wanted to learn about. But um, so we went through this intense training, um, but I really felt like, you know, I had a PhD in, in, in real estate when we were done. <laughs> um, and then um, when we 
when we went through all the classes and and, when you got all the education and everything, we were assigned a mentor and and stuff. We had made a goal to buy 10 rentals by the end of that year. And that was, I think, February. So so we had less than a year to accomplish our goal. And so the reason for our goal was uh, because at the time, my I've always been self-employed. I've been self-employed since I was 19. Um, so I, I've, I've never been into the W-2 world. Um, I'm ah. that I've always been, I wouldn't be a very good employee. Um, but, but anyways, um, I've always been self-motivated, been on my own since I, I back up a little bit. I graduated at 17. I graduated from business school at 18, mm-hmm. self-employed at 19, a self-motivator had to. Right. Um, so, so, anyways, my husband um, was working as a corrections officer for a maximum security psychiatric prison. Oh. It was very stressful. Yeah. And so, our goal was to accumulate enough rentals so that the uh, the cash flow, the co- total cash flow, would um, substitute his salary at the prison. Yep. And then we would be financially independent, basically off of our rentals, and um, he could quit his job. That was our yep. goal. And our goal was to have it accomplished by the end of the year. So um, w- with the organization that we were with, um, was Russ Whitney. Um, again, if anyone's old enough to remember Russ Whitney, that was the guy on the infomercial with the mustache. But we're still friends today. Um, but um, anyways, we went through the all the intense training and, and, and everything. And in the organization, it was important to set goals. And so we set our goals. And at the end of the year, we accomplished nine rentals. We didn't accomplish 10, but we did get nine okay. at the end of the year. Um, so because of that, um, the so, so Russ's uh, uh, Whitney Education, they were bringing, they were the largest real estate education company in the world. They were in seven different countries. Okay. They were bringing in 60,000 new students a month, mm-hmm. right? So over 700,000 new students a month. They would choose five people to put into the Hall of Fame mm-hmm. based on some, and so forth. So my husband and I counted as one of those five because we were a couple. That's awesome. And so we made Hall of Fame based on our accomplishments and everything. And um, so that kind of, in such a large organization, kind of put us in um, a a real good position um, because that's where Russ hired his trainers. Okay. Was from his Hall of Famers, right? Because you can't expect someone to teach you how to be successful if they haven't been successful themselves. That is correct, yes. If you haven't successfully done a lease option from point A to point, you can't tell me how to do it. If you haven't made a million dollars, you can't teach me how to do it, right? So it's important that who you give your money to to teach you something has actually been there, done that, and not just a couple of times, right? So um, because every deal is gonna be different and you know how to, you know, you got to know how to get through the obstacles. Exactly. So anyways, so we, we, we went on to be um, mentors for mm-hmm. his company um, and did that for about seven years or so. Um, I, we, our children were young, so I was doing more of the um, phone mentoring. And, and e- uh, at that point, we were having emails and stuff, which was what dial up. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. I mean, you know, yeah. So, but my husband actually um, uh, traveled um, and he'd spend, you know, about four days with the student in their own backyard, driving for dollars, getting their power team set up, actually putting in offers, sometimes actually got an accepted offer before he flew out of town. So it was, it was very, very valuable um, training. And that's how, like since 2001, I've been mentoring people as well based on that same, you know, education based, um, which um, I don't know, nowadays, I, I kind of seems to be a little watered down and stuff and everybody's mm-hmm. a guru because um, they've done a few deals. Right. So right. anyways, I, I just I just make sure people that mentoring is not only what I do um, and stuff, but I do. I, I like to help people get started. Um, I'm real big on learning um, different strategies yep. because when when I approach a seller, I've already analyzed the property four or five different ways. 
And yeah. so when I get to the seller, I'm going to present them with three or four different offers, make them, let them make the decision of what works for them so yep. that they feel like they're more in control and not being taken advantage of, which I already know every one of these that I'm presenting is going to work for me one way or another. Right. right. But like, for example, um, you know, if you don't know subject to, you might be passing up some deals because all you know is wholesaling so mm -hmm. that low ball cash offer isn't going to work for your seller. And because of your lack of knowledge, you you can't take that deal down where I'm going to come in behind you mm -hmm. and really dig into what the seller's issue is so I can solve their problem. Because yeah. that's what this is mostly about. It's good when you can make money at the same time, but <laughs> not solving the seller's problems. There was once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room 